We've been enjoying a beautiful sunny day finally. Now we're about to drop down into the canyon and uh, turns out the canyon is full of fog. After leaving the spring this morning and checking out a bit of the Jordan Crater's lava flow, we have rejoined the Owyhee River Canyon and this time we're going all the way to the bottom. If only we could see the bottom. Yeah, I think normally we should have a pretty amazing view down into the canyon right here, but here you just have, <laughs> you can't see anything at all. Hopefully tomorrow when we come back out of here, um, we'll actually be able to see the view. Oh, it's too bad there's so much fog because this must have just been an epic drive coming down in here. Even with limited visibility, we can see rugged, imposing rock formations spiking out of the hillsides like the jagged teeth of some gigantic prehistoric beast. The pale yellow and orange tones of the rocks and grasses are broken up by the vivid green of conifers and striking autumn colors of deciduous trees, clinging to life along the banks of the creek that finds its way alongside us down the gulch, winding its way through the arid terrain towards the river below. The road crosses this creek so many times that I eventually lose count. Man, this drive down is just spectacular. I was not expecting all of these like trees and color plus the rocks. just unreal. It's unreal. It is. Oh my gosh. Even the random rocks along the road are remarkably resplendent. So this is a really cool spot down in here and the drive was phenomenal even though we couldn't see much of it because of the fog. There's some cool old stuff down in here but uh, I think we both were expecting this to be truly like an abandoned uh, ranch site and there are some relatively modern buildings uh, with some modern amenities like satellite dishes, propane tanks and the buildings are locked up with you know no trespassing signs on them. Birch Creek Ranch is a BLM site. This is entirely public land, but it appears these residences must get seasonal use by caretakers.
These historic artifacts, remnants of a bygone era, are already fascinating in their own right, but set against the stunning backdrop of these dramatic canyon walls, well, this has to be one of the most striking scenes I've ever laid eyes on anywhere in Oregon. The river here is beautiful and uh, I think we're gonna push a little further down and see if we can find some place to camp along the river. What an absolutely insanely beautiful area. This is crazy. Building down here. As we progress along the river bottom, we continue to encounter elements of the ranching operation that dates to the early 1900s. The drivable road does come to an end, and looks like a great place to stop for the night. Three of the things that I use most often um, when I'm out on these trips are my uh, Claymore three-face light, my drone, and my camera. Now all of those things require uh, AC to recharge, and one of the things that I really appreciate about my Jackery 1500 is that I can recharge all of these things at the same time while it's also running my fridge, charging my GoPro batteries, uh, and charging my iPad, running all of that stuff at once and with power to spare. We've camped in so many amazing places on this trip. It would be difficult to say which was my favorite, but down along this gorgeous wild river, flanked by the crazy contours of these incredible cliffs, this spot is definitely near the top of my list. It's day four of this trip, so I guess it's only fair that at least once I let Jason right. relax while I get the fire going. Uh, yeah, it, sometimes it annoys me that, um, but we like you, Dave. Ridiculously. No, there is, you know, like, then, then they, you know, bring value, you know, as far as like, <laughs> Evan Brown says, in that way, though, they also, that almost makes them more special to me, <laughs> you know? Right, everybody. Like, the truth is, like, 
Why can't you just send me from your business and be like yeah, but I do usually carry coconut oil. I have some in the truck. Yeah, well, the coconut oil will keep it burning for a long time to get the fire started. So it's oh, a yeah. it's a it's a quick fire starter with two things that you probably already have on the vehicle. No, I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's a that's a good thing to have in my back pocket if I remember. Jason's got his dinner done already, but I'm going to chill by the fire for a bit before I get to work on my own meal. Alright, so tonight I'm actually going to try cooking on the campfire. I haven't done that before, but um, since I like to emulate everything that Primal Outdoors does, <laughs> I'm going to try cooking my dinner on the campfire tonight. I'm cutting up some okra to saute. If you're not a big fan of green vegetables, you might give okra a try. It has an interesting and unique flavor and is super easy to prepare. Okay, what do I need to do here? If I'm gonna, I wanna like start getting one of my pans heated up. Well, I need to pull maybe some what I do out. is like, um, yeah, maybe shove some of that stuff I just put on there to the back and then just try to right. move some of that coals forward. Yeah. Take that like log that's this one already, here? yeah, it's burning and bring it out front here. <laughs> I just want you to do this. Bring, Bring this here. Okay. There. Just like that. Now mm -hmm. put your pan right, right in there. Okay. Yep. Put that in there. Can't just like turn the knob and dial it down though, can ya? Those are coming along nicely. Better get the steak on there. Oh, yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. I feel like I'm not going to get that. enough heat right in the middle there. Maybe move that one off the side. Oh, off to the side? Yeah. I mean, you could. Yeah. I think you'll be fine. I think you'll all plenty of heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's hot. Jason has offered to cook a nice breakfast for both of us, so I'm taking the opportunity to explore a bit along the base of the cliffs.
spotted this rock wall from a distance and initially thought it must be the ruins of another building of some sort, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So this definitely doesn't appear to have been a building. It's just this curved wall that wraps around like that. It stops at each end, but it's backed up against the cliffs. It almost looks like a defensive position, like if you were trying to defend yourself from attackers, here's a place to get behind and fight them off. I wonder. Back at camp, Jason has rustled up a delicious breakfast of polenta and gravy with eggs. We'll take a couple of polenta packets yeah. here. Yeah. And then there's some eggs. Pretty good, actually. Pretty good yeah. I like my gravy pretty thick, so. Oh, so this is um, polenta instead of biscuits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's well, really good. It's a good idea. Biscuits can be sometimes challenging to get right on a cast iron skillet where mm. polenta is very, right. you know, friendly to cook. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, this is delicious. The sausage is amazing. It's trying to rain on us a little bit this morning. We are going to get camp packed up and drive back out of here. I thought I would cleverly recharge my Jackery 1500 using AC power from my inverter, but I've managed to blow a fuse which has killed all of my 12 volt outlets, making it impossible to run my GMRS radio or recharge anything at all while I drive. Well, this is a little lack of preparedness on my part because uh, I always carry extra fuses, but what I realize is that what I'm carrying is the, the small fuses that fit on the Forester. And I actually don't even know what kind of fuses this uses. Oh, those look like small ones too. Okay. The guide to the fuses is printed like upside down from where you, we'd normally want to read it. None of, none of them say like accessory or anything like that. Um, is this the fuse the cover here? That's the cover, yeah. Okay, I did have to look at the driver's manual, but I did figure out that there is a passenger compartment fuse box also. And I found the fuse that I think um, seems to correspond to what, what blew out, so. We're getting a crazy variety of weather this morning. We had some rain at camp, then sunny blue skies, then more clouds, then rain plus sun. to climb back out of the canyon the way we came in, but it's nice to get a better look at the scenery without the fog obscuring the view. destination, which is another road that drops down into the canyon. In the next episode, 
We'll make another partial descent into the canyon, exploring more of this stunning and surreal scenery, as well as yet another intriguing historic site. Thank you for watching.